In SOLIDWORKS 2020, they came out with flexible components. To make a component flexible, we'll simply click on the component that we want to make flexible, click Make Part Flexible, and choose a reference component that you like it to move with. In this case, this flat face here with the green check. And now when I move that component, the spring should also update every time that there's an automatic rebuild here. Hi, I'm Jacob Bakowski, and in this video, we are going to look at how to create a jig to create these flexible components in more detail. We're going to start with a new part here and create a new sketch on the front plane. And we're going to make sure that the sketch has a fixed point and then the moving end will be on this side. We're going to make sure it's symmetric. and give it some dimensions. Now this arc dimension, we're going to dimension it, but it's going to change. So we're going to leave it driven. We want to test this sketch because the sketch is the magic behind the flexible components. So if I drag this free end here, in fact, we're going to make sure that this free end is on the same plane as the origin. And we're going to drag it to make sure that the sketch works. This is a crucial step to make sure that the flexible component works. Because what's changing is the underlying sketch. Fantastic. Let's create a sheet metal part from this. Go base flange tab mid plane 90 and I'm going to use a gauge table and we're going to give it 12 gauge steel I'm going to make sure that it's above and that looks fantastic so now I've created my bracket and I'm going to save this part as flexible bracket so in these next steps, we're going to create a reusable virtual jig. And this is going to be used to create flexible components. And this will work every time. So we only really have to make this one time. We're going to make a new assembly. And then we're going to start out on the front plane. So I'll hit the X here. I'm going to start out on the front plane and make a skeleton sketch within the assembly here. And we'll just make, we just want a moving block is all we need. And I'm going to create some rails just for context. So those are optional. We'll oversize it here so it looks good. And let's put some holes here for the rails. And we'll give that a distance from the center. And we'll mirror that. All right, and rebuild this sketch when we're done. This is going to be our uh, master sketch. Then I'm going to go to Insert Components, New Part, and make a new part on the front plane, and simply convert those two into extrusions. So let's do Extruded Boss. Let's go the other direction because this is going to be our fixed end. The origin is going to be our fixed end, and we're going to move this way. And I'm just going to give it some arbitrary distance here. A thousand sounds great. Exit and rebuild. Then we're going to make a new part on the front plane again. We're simply going to click the master sketch and convert the whole thing. Then we'll go to features. Extruded boss. And we're going to go 10 millimeters in the other direction here. Fantastic. We'll rebuild, exit component, and I'm going to hide this master sketch. 
Now I want this block to move. So I'm going to expand it, expand the mates, and we're going to suppress the in place mate here so that this block can now free roam. And I'm just going to go ahead and do two concentric mates here so that they move along these two rails. Um, you can define this any which way you'd like if you want to have this just move along a plane. That works as well. So that this is moving along here. Then I'm going to save this file. Save as. And we're going to call it our flexible jig. Reuse. Reuse me. Uh, we do want the references to update, so we are going to go ahead and say save with in context references and simply say save all. Now we're going to create the flexible part. So I'm simply going to go insert components here. I'm going to grab my flexible bracket. I'm going to look at the origins here by showing origins. And then rotate this component so that the fixed end is here. Place this uh, in the right spot so that this end is fixed over here. And then we're going to tie it to the moving end. Now, the sketch is really important. So it's all going to happen at the sketch. These next steps are going to be used. And you can use this to make any flexible part. So it's important at this point to edit this part in context of top-down modeling. So you can put a edit part, or we can say edit component. Those are the same buttons. We're going to edit this in context. And then we're going to go to features reference geometry and create a plane that's coincident to this face right here of the moving block. While we're still editing this assembly, the next step is to take this externally referenced plane and drag it below the origin. You're going to do this every time because the sketch that controls the flexible component is going to happen after this sketch and we need to be able to access this plane so we need to move it right below the origin again you can do this every time now we're going to just edit the sketch for the space flange here that we know moves because we tested it earlier that we can stretch it and we're going to click the end point here of this sketch and I'm going to make it coincident with the plane that's externally referenced. And you can see it's already updating. Let's rebuild, exit component, and test that our jig works. So I'm going to move this in, rebuild. I'm going to move this out, rebuild. Fantastic. We know that the flexibility works inside of this flexible jig. So now I'm going to open up my flexible bracket by itself, and I'm going to save it. At this point, you should have an externally referenced plane referencing a point on the sketch that's going to be moving. You can always edit your sketch here. Go to Display Delete Relations and look at the external relationships. Now, we want to reuse this flexible bracket in another assembly. Here's how we do it. We're going to save this flexible bracket. Then we're going to go to our moving bracket assembly. Now here I have a moving piece that I'm going to push on this knob and it's only going to move in the positive or negative X to push this bracket. I'm going to insert components, grab my flexible bracket, and then I'm going to just profile mate these two where the fixed end is located at this origin on my fixed piece of the holder. We'll profile mate that. Fantastic. I'm going to move this out of the way. If that happens with the profile mate, I can simply click on this base bracket, use my breadcrumbs, right mouse click, and rotate clockwise and then we're going to rotate clockwise one more 90 degree rotation so that's in the orientation that I like. Then we're going to click on this bracket, tell it to make it flexible, 
and just take this missing reference to this plane here and then reference it to this face. That's where I like. I like it to move along this face. Ring check. And now let's test the motion. I'll push and pull on this knob. And the automatic rebuild should then stretch and shorten my flexible bracket. My name is Jacob Baykowski, and this has been a SOLIDWORKS Tech Tip from Go Engineer on how to create flexible components with a flexible jig that you can reuse every time. Thank you.